hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the, it's a bit of a hybrid podcast. This is the Jack Johnson podcast, the JF Media podcast, and a very, very special guest who, to be honest, I've wanted to speak to for a long time and get on the podcast. It's Sophie. <laughs> hello. <Hi. laughs> How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Uh, it feels weird because I'm sat in there in Johnny's living room, so I feel <laughs> like I'm like, welcome to your living room. Yeah. And we've actually got the youngest guest we've ever had on the Jack Johnson podcast, the little baby Aria, who is the cutest thing of like, I just can't, she's looking at me now and I'm just like, I don't want to do a podcast, I just want to play with you, don't I? <laughs> but she's, yeah, so if you hear a small child, a baby. <laughs> it's it's her, she's just not in shock. Um, but first of all, thank you for having me in your home. We had a lovely evening last night. First and foremost, Sophie, you're the best cook I've come across Oh, Ever. Stop. Like, <laughs> where okay. did your passion and love for food come? Because you can taste it in your food. Like. Uh, from my mum, I think. Uh, she was a um, home economics teacher before she had me, so she taught people how to cook. So at home, everything was cooked from scratch, really, and just grew up around that. And that's, you know, like waking up on a, a weekend morning and smelling fresh soup, and, you know, that, that was my mum's thing and I just sort of took that on I suppose. It's funny that because I, I'm proper into me cooking as well and it, it's the exact same thing it came from my mum yeah. and I think it's those little things early doors when it's you know you know if it's just cutting up an onion or they're teaching you and you don't even realise them. Yeah, I think when absolutely. I got older I realised and obviously there's always that surprise oh you cook but yeah. I think it's that thing I think it's something that my uncle said it actually years ago it was very interesting he said if you can read you can cook which I think is a great way of putting it but I think you have to have that those those influences, don't yeah. you? It's yeah. it's uh, yeah. it's something that it's a passion, but the more you delve into it, and, yeah, and uh, your why about yeah. it, like I've mm. got a big why about why I cook. Mm. Um, but from from being little, I think as well, my parents were a bit older, so mm. I was with my mom all the time. Not that you're not when you're younger, but I can mm. see that difference with me and Aria already and me and the girls like when you're a bit older and you have children they are your focus is more on them not you're not missing out on anything do you know what I mean yeah. so I was literally with my mum in the kitchen all the time making whatever so those little things were just going in that little sponge that was soaking up everything mm. and it just seemed to remain with me and then my favorite um lesson at school was cooking mm. so and my favorite teacher at school was my cooking teacher I think that's a big thing as well, isn't it? It's like you say, the, those influences you have, yeah. spe specifically teachers. Is that something you're conscious of now, obviously, with, with your girls? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and I can sort of see it, actually. Like, their favourite teacher, both of them will go to the same school, but in different years, obviously. Mm -hmm. And their favourite teacher is someone that I've known since I was about 16, and I used to work with her in a shop in oh. Principles. And then she's gone on to be a drama teacher. Oh, nice. And she now teaches my children, which is such a small world. <laughs> and they're both really, like, dramatic, especially my middle child. She's very dramatic, isn't she? Everybody in this house is dramatic. <laughs> I was going to say, first <laughs> of all, how do you do it? You're <laughs> surrounded by the ladies. It's like, I'm the most dramatic one, yeah, that's yeah. the thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's You're the biggest true, kid in there, isn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> it's very true. Um, so, yeah, maybe that will come to like that they'll do something down that road mm. drama side of it and obviously they've been surrounded by cameras as well since they were yeah. tiny we've both modeled since they were tiny so yeah. that is yeah. a lovely segue i couldn't have done it better before, <laughs> about going into modeling modeling and yeah. so how did you get into that um it's actually from my brother so my brother went and um he traveled the world it was when um what year was the tsunami? Because he was there when that happened. By my recollection, remember. it might have been the 23rd of June, 2009. Yeah. <laughs> it was not. <laughs> Jamie Pulled <Pauletta>. up. <laughs> yeah. um, I can't remember. But it's too far. It's away. early 2000s. Isn't yeah. It? Mm. And um, whilst he was in Australia, he then um, got signed to an agency. Nice. And when he came back, he then signed with Boss. Oh yeah, um, we know boss. Yeah, the boss. and um, we've all been a, a boss family member, I think. Mm. And um, you're coming up. And um, she is. Yeah. She is. <laughs> yeah. 
And from that, his agent, I then had the girls and his agent um, asked for me to bring them in and then we all got signed up and then it just sort of went from there and Sophia was like two weeks old when that happened. Prior to that, I'd done modelling but not with an agency, you know, like hair or wedding dress stuff. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, and then it just went on from there and then I did loads with the girls when they were little mm. and then my own sort of career developed from that really. Mm. Then I did a lot of like beauty work and stuff. It's fu- it's funny because again, like, all of us. We've she's all... a makeup artist as well, by the way. Yeah, that goes handy. Sophie does it all, guys. I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. She's just, she's the best. Oh, so, Jack, stop. <laughs> she's basically like a Swiss Army knife. Listen, she can, do, she can do it all. Look at now, she's podcasting and mothering at the same time. She's Ooh. actually making a suit while we speak as well. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's funny, I think, the, the modeling thing because you're stunning. Like, you're absolutely stunning. Uh-huh. And it's that thing, isn't it, where some people are either like photogenic or not, but yourself are like, you, you capture really well. Mm. Is that something over time you've kind of developed or is it just a natural thing? Because I feel like it's a natural thing with you where it's just, that's just who you are. You just, but obviously, like anything, the more you do, the more experience you get yeah, in front of the camera. Yeah, and there are times like now where I feel unconfident mm. um, with having a baby and whatever. My body's changed massively. I feel like I don't look the same at all. And, um, but I know that if I just have a couple of sessions, maybe with Johnny, it will bring that confidence back. And I know just something that's in it, like you say, it's just in you, I think. And it, it becomes, it doesn't, I think it's something for myself. Like I actually, am, I'm not bothered or actually really enjoy having my picture taken, but I know I'll have my picture taken. Yeah. And I think that's what it is. And you get to a point where you can, you're almost like out of body and you're like, oh, it's not about me, it's about capturing whether it's the, yeah. the clothes or... And you sort of know, yeah. you know, like, what that's going to look like on the other side of the camera. Yeah. It, it, you need to have sort of experienced mm. both ends of it, I think. Mm. And that's why I also like doing the makeup and styling because mm. being help on set comes naturally if you've been in front of the camera. Yeah. You, you sort of know what where to move or... Yeah. Um, you know, how to position your face or whatever. Mm. But again, all of this comes back from my mum because she was a model. <laughs> I've seen pictures yeah. of Margaret Wright. Saying, all I need to say is, yo. <laughs> Stop. What's Margaret saying? <laughs> I mean, Grandma's. Um, the, the pictures don't lie, bruv. <laughs> I mean, um, Stop when I saw head. Margaret, I thought, I'm going to be all right. <laughs> <laughs> in years so to come, I'm going to be absolutely fine. Apple yeah, doesn't fall far from the tree. Exactly. Yeah. No, I am literally a ringer for her as well. I look exactly like her. That's why I? you were chosen, babes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, Pete yeah. Pete did a great job. I mean, Listen, he's, a shout out Pete yeah, every shout time. Out Pete, yeah. <laughs> Big Pete. Big Pete. <laughs> Big Pete in the, in the mix. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think I think going back to, you know, that's, that's one thing that I didn't realise we had in common, is that I got into doing modelling through my sister as well. Mm. Um, and she got into it through her brother, so it's kind of like another thing that we yeah. randomly share in common. Um, and yeah, I suppose for you know for ourselves, we met when we were in front of the camera. Mm. Now we collaborate from being behind the camera, and yeah, and I think that's really really important for, yeah, for what do, we do yeah. to to understand. Not, not, I think, just to kind of get the tone of of what we're actually doing, give advice, and and just understand, you know, yeah. that a lot of people kind of are uncomfortable or, you know, all those people who go, oh, right, you know what, I, I don't take a good picture of me. And then they just need a bit of coaching. And they're like, yeah. oh, my God, I, I look really good. Now, how many times have we had that experience oh, with it's, people? It, to, to me, it's, <laughs> it's, it's like my favourite thing to do. It's yeah. like capture pictures and footage. But it's, I think it's specifically in a, in a shot, like a photo, a mm. photograph. Photograph. <laughs> photograph. Um, photographs. When it, it is candid, but then actually when you take a still of someone and you know they might not be so confident and then you have that conversation and you relax and because again we know exactly what it's like yeah. and then you take that picture and then you show them and you, it's not edited it's not you've not put any fancy things on it it's mm-hmm. just no you you're stunning do you know what i mean yeah. it's just like say whether it's the angle or the look yeah. or mm-hmm. and i think a lot of time it is it's just confidence in it yeah. and letting letting go of like yeah. mm-hmm. i think people think that that picture that one picture that's like to just happen like that and it can be like hundreds of pictures yeah. and you find that one which, which just pops up at you mm. but again 
going back to the being in front and, and behind the camera, I've worked with photographers that have never been in front of the camera and it and then worked with ones that have been in front of the camera and it, the difference is massive. Yeah. Mm. It, they just don't, it's just not the same. Mm. Like, even for an experienced model, like having a bit of direction, oh dear, is um, always Can helpful. Isn't it? Okay. I think it's that thing like you were saying, and again, I think with all of us, we've had we've had different roles and experience on set and I think that's what gives you confidence in any kind of any you know area you step into mm -hmm. and also I think it's that respect you have as well where like everyone on set is doing a job whether you're in front or behind the camera mm -hmm. um, and to be perfectly honest it's a lot harder behind the camera you know like yourself if you do I remember when you came and did a shoot with us and you do you know you had two free looks you have to do for us mm -hmm. you know we're just you know, pressing play and obviously capturing and doing a little interview, but you mm. you have appreciation for the whole process. Talk to me a little bit about that. What, what obviously you're interested in, like obviously fashion and hair and style and stuff. When, when was kind of the first time you thought, oh, actually, I want to, I want to go behind the camera and kind of help? Uh, that was at school actually. Yeah. I did drama for A level, but I didn't do the uh, acting. I did um, styling and hair and makeup. Nice. I got an A, an a in it. Uh, She's legit. Then, She's legit. <laughs> but having said that, it's probably something I should have maybe gone further with education wise, but I didn't. It just, and sort of being self taught at things, it almost makes you feel a little bit unconfident when you're going for a job. I think when there's people that have gone and gone to uni to do, you know, like hair and makeup or whatever, and yours is a self taught skill. But again, that's the same with my cooking. That is a self-taught skill. Mm. But I think both of them come down to being creative because we eat mm. with our eyes too, so it has to look nice. Yeah, well, okay. and, yeah. and if if I just slopped it on a plate, it wouldn't be the same, no. um, even if it did taste good, do you know? Mm. So just I think it's just a creative a creative skill mm. that, that's at the bottom of it mm. all. <laughs> I think it's again I think it goes down to experience doesn't it and then obviously when you and that's the great thing with doing what we do we get to work with so many different people and you yeah. get to you get to take bits don't you from yeah. from each, each other um obviously with you guys being together now how how does that work because obviously you, you both are like mad busy all the time obviously yeah. you're looking after your family and stuff I get to see to see it and be a part of it it's it's great I love coming here as well but it's <laughs> obviously there's challenges but yeah. You, you know, because you've got your, your own business as well with your retreats. Obviously, touch a little bit on that, if you don't yeah. mind, because obviously it's amazing yeah. what you do. Yeah, I um, I run retreats with Leanne. Um, they are like well-being retreats, so it's like a snippet into um, giving you a toolbox of things to help you go through trauma or um, help you detox your mind, body and soul, basically. And we do them over a three-day period, usually, or occasionally we do a long one. Um, that usually is in Portugal, which is like a week long. Um, last year we did do one in Mexico, actually, which was hot, hot, hot. Um, heavily pregnant as well, weren't you? Oh, heavily pregnant. It was quite a challenge. Done, the worst kitchen ever as well for cooking, but we did it. Now, um, they are like a passion, really, because they are where I get to... The retreats are where I get to cook for people that need it um, at home and when guests come that's lovely that's like my love language and giving you all nice food that's um, cooked from scratch and is healthy but on a retreat that's where people who really need to change or switch up things in their lives and um, that's how I help them. And how, how important is it for you, for you to, to do that and like I say share your gift and, and knowledge really as well because I think this is something that I have a, a little bit of background in, in health and well-being with my degree, but also like working in, in food as well. Mm. I can't stress enough to people, like I always say to people, like it's diet that's the most important thing. Oh, definitely. Obviously, it's something that you, you preach and obviously with Eat, Pray, Self, Love, it's like, it's a it's part of the ethos, isn't it? Yeah. I, um, I saw something the other day and it said, don't count um, calories, count chemicals. Mm. Because that. people are like, fixated on I can only have this many calories a day but they don't look where those calories are coming from yeah. so it, especially 
don't want to put like a bad name on PTs, but they, they look at macro so much, they're not looking at where that source of food's coming from, and then yeah. that is making people ill. Yeah, you might have stripped them down so they've got like 1% body fat, yeah. but what they've actually created their cells on in the last six months while doing it is shit. Yeah, it's so true. illness is like thriving around the body, whereas if you actually cut down all the crap and all the chemicals, mm. you'd lose that weight anyway. Like, yeah. It, 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 the body holds on to fat to protect itself. Mm. Um, so ridding all of that, which is what I do on the retreat, especially the, I've just done an amazing one with Jessica. Um, she literally wanted it all stripped back. So it was all organic. There was literally no processed food whatsoever, which I don't really use, but occasionally you might want to use a, a bit of, um, I don't know, a paste for a curry yeah. or whatever. But everything was stripped back. Um, there was no sugar and no caffeine. And wow. These ladies didn't even know that that was going to happen to them when they got there. So <laughs> um, that is quite a detox. If you've had like two, three coffees a day and then you go cold turkey on it, the headaches are serious. Yeah. And the same again with sugar because it's so addictive. Mm. And it's not just you personally. It's all of that gut bacteria that, you're, that is in your microbiome that's addicted to it. Yeah. So Ari knows, don't she? Oh, she yeah. Knows. You know. You never had sugar, have you, love? <laughs> no. She's like, I'm sweet yeah. enough. Yeah. I, th I, think it, I think it's important in that regard as well because, you know, it's, it's something that's um, a passion, um, Sophie's, and I feel like it's something that she preaches and she thinks that is important. But I feel like the experience of, of her journey as well from... Well, I'll let you tell the story about your own health and how food has like really had that impact on your life. Mm -hmm. um, not just something that, you know, I feel like there's there's people who are very knowledgeable about certain things. I mean, it's going back to the self-taught thing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. There's people who are very knowledgeable because they've studied it. All right. And studying something is is very, very um it's it's great do you know what i mean and i would never knock anybody for studying something but there's when you're self-taught you seek more experience mm. and you try and fail a little bit more yeah. because you don't think you know anything you, you've got an open mind so i feel like having that experience of going through that situation where you have to use you know the tools around you to be able to heal is is something that not many people actually go through so why don't you explain that, love? <laughs> no, what what set up that was? <laughs> Thanks. So yeah, my my experience. Um, I was going to say it started five years ago when I when I was actually really poorly, but prior to that, I since having my second child, I was diagnosed with chronic fatigue. So I spent. It was four years until I then was whizzed into hospital, but I spent those four years searching for an answer because I knew that my feeling of, it was almost like I was with a phone that had run down its battery over the day and I plugged it in overnight and woke up in the morning and I'd not turned the plug on. Like it had been all night asleep, but in the morning I had zero power still and I had two children under two and it was hard work, but I knew that it wasn't, it wasn't something that I couldn't I couldn't solve, even though I was going to and from the hospital. And at that time was um, sort of almost reliant on the NHS to give me an answer, which is what all of us do. When we're poorly, we go to the doctor, don't we? Yeah. Um, and we don't sort of seek for some natural answer or um, we don't trust in someone who isn't got a doctor label in front mm. of their name. It's something that I struggle with now when I'm helping ladies or, or men. Um, but... Um, in that search for trying to find my way out of this fatigued rut, um, I cleaned up my diet and started teaching people how to um, clean eat, if you will. I still ate meat at that time, I still ate bits of dairy. Um, it was mainly cutting out things like gluten and milk, you know, like the basics, sugar. Um, and then I was heavily into the gym. I love training, but I was very much that chicken, veggie, broccoli kind of girl, yeah. which loads of people are, aren't they, in yeah. training? Um, and also, women tend to avoid carbs, so that was a big, big thing that um, 
I did. And then I got rushed to the hospital with really bad abdominal pain and like really, really bad abdominal pain. And they were going to send me home with gastritis. And my mum was like, oh, don't mind her. Okay, she's not just ill, she's really ill, I can tell. Because I was a mum, I was a single parent as well. If you've got a bit of a tummy ache, you just get on with your day. I was there writhing around in pain, so my mum knew that there was just something, that mother's instinct, that, yeah. that wasn't, it wasn't just gastritis. So they kept me in overnight, and then the following day, a stenographer came with um, to just scan my tummy whilst I was in the hospital bed. And as she was doing it, she was looking for gallstones, which were on more to the right side, the pain was on my left. Um, and as she moved it over to the left side, she noticed a large mass next to my spleen. And she looked at the nurse and said, you need to send for a CT immediately. So off I went, scared shitless, like, yeah. um, didn't know what on earth was going on with me. And it turned out I had, at the time, a 10 centimetre mass attached to my pancreas and my spleen, and they weren't sure if it was inside my stomach as well. So. Um, I basically just to wrap it up, spend nine weeks in hospital. It took four weeks for them to take out the mass. Um, I was on huge amounts of morphine, fentanyl, like all of the big guys of pain relief. Um, I was unable to eat in hospital because as soon as like this happened and the word cancer came up, um, we sort of looked into what I could do at that time to help myself before I, I got more poorly, basically. Yeah. So I cut out meat um, and cut out dairy, but the hospital couldn't actually feed me. And when I said that I was vegan when I was in there, they bought me that, you know that cheese mix that's in the freezer that's like cubes of carrots, brook, um, peas and sweet corn. Yeah, it's like, it was that on a plate. That's yeah. all they gave me. <laughs> and... Um, wow. Then I had, I got sent home for four days to form my op to be with my children, to write my will, to um, sleep in my own bed. And then I had a nine hour operation uh, on the Monday morning to go back to, and they didn't quite know how it would come out with that. They definitely thought I'd be diabetic because I've only got a tiny bit of my pancreas left. They didn't know whether I'd come out with a um, stomach bypass. Um, and it does actually say on the medical notes that I've had some of my stomach removed, but no one's ever ever discussed that with me, and mm. I don't think I have, but it is on the notes. Um, and no spleen. So with having no spleen in the NHS side, that's your immune system. So if you have that out, then you need to have antibiotics every single day. Mm. Um, so um, thankfully, I came out of it. Mm. I'm not diabetic and never have been diabetic, though I did become more poorly after it and my small bowel started to die. So two weeks after that, I had to have another emergency operation where they removed some of my small bowel. They literally told my mum, should we down for half an hour and see what it is that's happening? Because they have no idea when mm. my bowel line started again. Um, and they tried a few different things like putting, um, you know, they put dye in. Yeah, to see what's yeah, there. Yeah, scanning that every hour to see where it's gone in the body. Mm. This dye got so far and then came back out. So they just didn't know what was going on with me. Mm. Um, and so I've had some of that removed. And now my, my issues with that is that my small bowel is full of scar tissue. So me can't, I, I can't digest meat. Or when I have tried to eat meat, I've been back in hospital because it can't get through this rigid bit yeah. where your bowel opens to like four centimeters and back to close it um it can't do that to get food through so that that's where i'm at with that so my journey then sort of developed into well i'm not going to eat what they tell me to eat the sheet that they sent me home with was basically eat what fits because that's all you can digest mm. don't eat milk seeds don't eat um fruit and veg with skins on and so it left me with like nothing to eat mm. and I thought this isn't that this isn't this isn't the way forward. Mm. So research into like Dr. Sebi, Sun Alkaline Way of Life, um, Dr. Morse, like juicing and enemas. Um, I sort of developed this protocol that has got me here, basically. Mm. I don't take any antibiotics every day. Mm. I don't not diabetic like they thought I would be. Mm. And I pretty much can eat everything other than the meat and I don't miss it. So, 
yeah, it's sort of worth going on like that, really. I, it's, thank you for sharing that, because I can't imagine it's easy, and at the same time, it must be really, um, you must be really proud, because, again, it's something that I think happens to a lot of people, where you think, oh, I'm going through some stuff, and again, it's all individual, but at the end of the day, like, that's just wild, what's happened there, mm. and it's something that you've, you constantly had to learn and knowing your own body and like yeah. say with your mum, mother's intuition, knowing that type of thing. I'm yeah. just going like she's she's not well and yeah. it's again it's something that I think you made a, a really good point about it and it's listen, huge I've got massive respect for the NHS and for yeah. doctors and nurses. I know a lot of doctors and nurses who, you know, don't get the respect that they deserve. Um that being said, I feel like us as humans now have to take so much more responsibility about our health and yeah. spe specifically our generation because I think in older generations gone by, particularly like my grand blesser and even my mum and dad, the, it is, it's like, it's gospel if the doctor says it and yeah. I don't think it necessarily is. I was always taught to question things and I think, yeah, that's what you have to do and it's like what you've been doing. You, yeah, and it's again about saying being self-taught and mm. learning. You yeah. learn by failing. Obviously yeah. for you, it's a total, it's, it's you know, it's life and death, literally. Yeah. But that's, you've had to react, and that's what you've done. And again, it's something that you've, you've turned a, neg a real negative thing and turned it into a positive. And now, like you said, you've, you've got a, a business out of it, like you, you're changing people's lives yeah. um, because you've changed your own. Yeah. And I think that's something that, whether you're self-taught or not, that to me speaks volumes of the person who you are, but also of the, <laughs> the understanding of going like, well, yeah, I have got a voice, and you have, you do have to use it. And I know you're not very, you're very humble, mm. but you're meant you. And mm -hmm. like, that's incredible what you've done and what you'll continue to do because it's something that people need to hear. Because I think it's the same with diet as well. It's that kind of like you were saying about the PTs, and again, we've got a load of PT friends, lo load of athlete friends who don't actually know. It's mad when I realised I had, and I'm, I'm not saying I know all the answers. I really don't, but. It's something with food I've always been interested in okay. and understanding, especially when I come here, like the food's always amazing. Like last night I was asking about the recipe and all stuff like that because it's, you have to take responsibility and make the effort to, to eat better. And I know at times it does cost more in certain things where it's organic and stuff, but yeah. you can't put a price on your health okay. and it doesn't matter, you know, what, you know, colour, creed, anything like that. It's like, your health is the most important thing and your family and all that. And yeah. it's like, yeah. if you can help control your diet and actually get understanding about, like, say, yourself and, you know, investing in yourself and going on your retreats and finding that out, just going to touch a little bit back about that last retreat you did because I think that was really interesting. Mm -hmm. It's Did you notice a massive difference in the ladies that were on that? And not just, obviously, the stuff they were doing, but from your... what you'd prepared. Yeah. And obviously kind of their... Because I think there's another thing what a lot of people do because I know I'll eat anything me, I'm not asked, I'll try anything, but some people are so kind of like, I yeah. don't like that, and it's yeah. like, you've not even tried it. Yeah. Whereas with yourself, yeah. I know like you're saying, I bet you made, well it is, I looked at the videos, they're incredible. It's like, you do it in such a way where it's like, it looks so good and it tastes so good, before they know, it's like, I don't even know I like that. Yeah. It's, the, it's that kind of like, you're self-taught, yeah. like yeah. I don't like this thing. I actually quite like it when someone tells me that they don't eat something, it's like a challenge. Yeah, yeah. To, um, it didn't particularly happen on Jessica's, but in um, Portugal it did, um, where I had one meal where I, it was aubergines, and one lady said to me, I really don't like aubergine, like I really don't like it. And I'd roasted this aubergine in sweet chilli, oh. and oh. she was like, wow, I really like aubergines. Mm. Like, see, you just need to like. I don't know. It, it, even if, if you don't like something, just try it a bit different. You know, yeah. try it. And probably it's not something that anybody would do. It's not really something I do is roast aubergines and sweet chilli. But I, when I'm in somewhere, especially get plunked in the kitchen somewhere abroad, I've not got a supermarket next door, and I have to yeah. use what is in front of me. Yeah. I think this goes back to living that program, Ready, Steady, Cook. Oh, how good was that, man? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boy. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Shout out Ainsley. <laughs> <laughs> he's, like, he's like one of our things that yeah. is on the podcast. Uncle like, Ainsley. We yeah, love yeah, Ainsley. Come on. Come on. But yeah. it, no, but it is. It's, oh, honestly, it's, yeah. and that is like when I prepare my best teas is when we've not been shopping and it's a challenge. There's yeah. things in the cupboard. What am I going to do about yeah, it? Yeah. And then... Um, 
I just said to Johnny yesterday, I think that's going to be part of my recipe book, like mm. staples that you should have in your cupboard just in case there is nothing yeah. in, and this is what you can make from it. Do you know? Like... I, think, I think that's a, a great one to, to do because, again, I think this is another thing where, where people are struggling with, with food and and cooking. Like, yeah. I enjoy it. I'll put tunes on, I'll put a podcast on. I yeah. actually like the process yeah. of cooking yeah. and cooking for... And, again, it's difficult for me because I cook for myself, so it's more the sense of I know I'm prepping for the next couple of days, so yeah. I want to make something that's nice. Yeah. How important is that? Is like you say, having those like staple yeah, ingredients yeah. where you go, I know I can make two or three meals out of these yeah. certain staples, and like yeah. going from them to what's your like, what's your staple? Like sweet potatoes got to be one because yeah, red lentils. Red like, lentils. Literally whiz them up into anything, yeah. whether it's a dip, a cottage pie, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a vegan bolognese. Oh. Like what I made last night, I wouldn't even know what you called it, but I just chugged it. I had, for me, it was like it was like a. A veggie lasagna. Yeah, someone on the retreat said that. With, with a topping of sweet potato. It yeah. was mad. I was just like... And then, like, a <laughs> little, little bit of mint on the top. Yeah. A few little... She did us a few little prawns on the side. A nice little bread as well. Yeah. But it's... I, I think what it is, it's, it's hearty, wholesome food. But it's healthy food. And I think that's, the, I think that's yeah. where people also have a... And I think we all do it. It's the... You think, oh, if I'm eating healthy, it can't be nice or it can't be. Yeah, it's not like fish and chips. It's like yeah. it's just it's finding that balance, isn't it? And yeah. it's finding those. That's what I like actually. When I have fed people on the retreats, is that they they don't think that they're gonna like it, but usually because it's all vegan. The retreat just said, yes, we didn't have just vegan. Um, I did cook a chicken, a duck, and two pieces of salmon one night because they were warriors. So they done. A, I did like a warrior dinner. Um, but yeah, as soon as you say it's just vegetables, they think, oh no, I'm not going to like the food, or I'm going to be starving, that's one of the things yeah. they think, but they're not, and they all really enjoy it, and they all, well, I'm saying that, I think they do. <laughs> um, Listen, but they, they better enjoy it. <laughs> they do. They do. But they, they do all ask after, you know, like, um, I do have a recipe book, which is something that needs to happen, mm. um, and on this one in particular, they're asking me if I, if I run um, retreats just for cooking, which is something that I will start next year, I think, when she's a bit bigger. Um, and she, and but that's what, sous yeah, but that's what I did used to do is teach people how to cook. So it's not something that I, I'm scared of, if you will. Yeah. Um, but I think what people tend to do is overcomplicate their ingredients. Mm. Um, what I, I like to say to the ladies is like, we've been put on this earth and she will provide everything that we need. Oh, I like that. But everything that you need to mm. nurture yourself is here naturally mm. whether it be the nettles you walk past on your dog walk mm. the dandelions that you think are weeds like mm. these things are so full of nutrients yet we're told mm. they're weeds um, on this particular retreat i made a um a section because they weren't allowed caffeine a section where i'd put all loose teas into um glass jars mm. and then they had their own um tea bags and they could make their own blend of tea and oh, I put nice. some examples of what goes with what for instance you'd put nettle leaves with rose hips because nettle's full of iron rose hips full of vitamin c so them in a tea is like perfect for the morning yeah. makes you um feel alive giving you that boost of iron um so yeah just little things like that and then one lady was like i have all these in my garden like i can dry all these out i didn't even know that i could do that and it's just those little like little nuggets of information that then you know you're going to change someone's life a little bit that makes them feel all warm and fuzzy inside yeah but you, but you do though don't you because it's like i know exactly the feeling of like when you cook a nice meal and you see people enjoy it like i know i can see you last night like yeah, you, you it's really hard for me not to go, how is it? Yeah, I know, but you can you obviously, like when we do, yeah, I think the best thing that happens, like no one speaks at all, yeah. I'm just like, <laughs> absolutely wolfing it down. Like I have to proper stop myself from like eating it so quick. Because I'm, like, I'm, the, I'm normally I'm eating on my own, I'm like... Yeah. But um, no, it's more that as well, like taking your time to actually enjoy it. I mean, I think that's something that I've I've learned yeah, over the years. A lot of my friends comment, because you take ages with your food, but it's that's another thing as well, it's like... Again, I think it's it's eating habits, but also I feel like in this country as well, like we're not like in the Mediterranean or other parts of the world where we actually take our time to yeah. eat. And, mm. You know, we it's we should. You know, mm. it's something that until you go abroad or on holiday or like say you sat mm. around with family and friends, yeah. it's like it, that that you know having that time. Yeah. Um, 
And and I noticed that on the retreats, actually, that they've had this, like, um, workshops throughout the day. And then when they come to the mealtime is when they actually socialise. Because yeah. in the workshops, you've just seen people go through go through things or trauma comes up or it's you know emotional or they're having fun you know it's yeah, not yeah, all yeah. horrendous yeah but it's focused um, isn't it? it's yeah. on that specific one and then at the meal time they sit and they laugh and they so the food is quite a big part of that you yeah know, totally the, you know oh they're talking about what they're eating and oh what's this we're having because i'm not always there i'm like tidying away what i'm cooking i go off and sit and eat with them yeah. um but yeah, it is important that we have those moments, especially as a family, like at the minute, our um, kitchen table's tucked away, but we do try and spend that time in the evening sat around the table talking about the day, you know? Yeah. It's really important and we just don't do it. Lives are so fast paced, aren't yeah. they? Um, that that gets lost. Mm. I, I noticed we do it like specifically when me and Johnny are kind of go away for a couple of days filming and stuff and bless her like so always like cooks as a meal and like it's mm -hmm. it's so nice to have that i can't i can't tell you how nice it is because even on the road like we're we and try we try and be conscious obviously sometimes we are eating sweets and stuff just to keep us going because we're on set yeah. for at least 14 hours whatever but i've noticed with us like now it's like we're turning to like let's get mixed grapes on the way home or just little again yeah, i think that's what it is it's it's little changes isn't yeah. it that you can implement yeah. little habits that yeah will have a, a larger impact on yeah. on yourself and yeah. then hopefully others like yeah. that's the big thing isn't it? yeah and i think everyone thinks that i'm really strict but I, now right now i'm not and i've been really not strict haven't i whilst i was pregnant and yeah i've been um, strict obviously obviously johnny doesn't <laughs> with, do anything organic with, he's just um, he's mr organic we call yeah him. and pretty much i've i do have to tell her off quite a bit yeah these days <laughs> but, yeah, i'm so. a, i'm a really really bad influence because when i come i always buy pudding and my puddings are Shout out Lidl. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Lidl, Lidl, if you want to sponsor us and give us some chocolate brownies. Mm. I blame my sister, to be fair, because she yeah. got me hooked on them. But again, I think this is the other thing as well. It is it's balance, isn't it? Like, it's yeah. you have to have balance. Like, we were yeah. saying about fats before. Like, I used to have a big one where people are like, oh, I can't have carbs or fats. And I'm like, your body needs fats. Yeah. Like, what, I not ever? From, no. from <laughs> almond yeah. butter. That's where I get my fats instead yeah. of eating loads of chocolate. Yeah. I will eat chocolate. Like, everyone knows me. Yeah. Like, everyone on here will be like, mate, you've got this. <laughs> With a sweet tooth over Mr. <laughs> Holman Croissant over here, but it is. It's and again, that's the other side of it. With what we were talking before about like training and stuff, it's like I train so hard, so I can eat what I want. But how important is that? Like you saying, then you know, it's training and, and eating the right foods because you do feel better all around, mm. then, don't yeah. you? At, on a cellular level, right? So every day our body is creating trillions of shell, cells, shells, cells. <laughs> And each of those cells then reproduces itself. So if you start creating cells, which are created on everything, your environment, you're in, the stress levels that you have, down to like um, the um, candles you burn in your house, yeah. not just what you're eating, these cells are all produced on that. So if one of them has an abnormal, is abnormal, it's going to reproduce itself. And then that keeps re reproducing. And then these cells group together and that is what is your tumour or your mm. cyst or your fibroid or whatever. Um, but as quickly as your body has made that, if you give it the right things to get rid of it, it will break it down. And that is the magic. And that's where I was a year on after I came out of hospital when I had my one year checkup. So every six months I'd have a checkup. Um, and one year after it, I'd had a scan to check my abdomen. And I went into that um, room and my surgeon, who is usually really like smiling, happy, was not. And I immediately knew something was not right. Mm. And he sat down and he said, Sophie, how are you feeling? And I was like, I'm okay. <laughs> mm. I thought I was fine. And he said, well, I just need to talk to you about your last CT scan. Uh, unfortunately, I think the cancer spread to your liver mm. and... Um, I'm really sorry you're so young to have to go through this again mm. and I literally sat there with facing secondary liver cancer so pancreatic cancer it's only five percent of people survive <laughs> and then liver cancer usually wipes everybody out if it comes around secondary mm. and I was sat there like oh my god I've done this once I don't want to do it again it's been a long slog um, and I went away from that with a appointment for an MRI to see if they could burn, chop or put it out and I just went and fasted 
So I literally fasted on green alkaline juice from that uh, from that appointment to my um, MRI, which is a, it was eleven days actually, and then two days after that, my surgeon rang me and it was just before a bank holiday. And he said, Sophie, I just wanted to let you know. I was like, oh my God, surgeon's ringing me, it must be horrendous, but they're like getting me in now. Yeah. I just want to let you know the MRI came back clear. That's wild, that, eh? And I had literally... And that's all you've done? You I've just... done like four enemas a day. So mm. with a coffee enema, you, um, it, it, the water is absorbed obviously through your rear end mm. and it goes through your um, large intestine in back into your body mm. as it would if you've had food and it's sat in your large intestine and it pulls the water out. Mm. Um, so then it goes through your liver to cleanse it um, and then through your kidneys and out through your urine. So I'd literally been cleansing my liver over and over four times a day with these, um, like my hand gestures, <laughs> with these enemas and then um, from the top end, being having alkaline green juices, yeah. about six of them a day. Um, didn't stop life, carried on, I've got two children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the time I was opening Sophie's Kitchen um, food prep, I was literally wallpapering a wall because I couldn't focus, let myself focus on how poorly I possibly was. Yeah, yeah. I needed to focus on something else. Um, but yeah, so as soon as you can create something, you can get rid of it if you have the right tools. You know what to do. It's, I think, yeah, I think that's a really important message from. I think there's going to be a lot of important messages today, but I think it's that, isn't it? It's like you say, it's how you react to, to, to news as well, and obviously what you've been told and what you've had to, what yeah. you've already gone through. It's like, how can I react to this in the best possible way? What yeah, because I could have I definitely gone the other way. And Which then, is understandable as yeah, well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like and you, then you become cancer. Yeah. You aren't. You, you aren't a survivor. You yeah. become it. And that happens a lot. People yeah. just hear that big C and think, oh my God, that's the end. Yeah, yeah, and of course. Your, your body only listens to you. So mm. every single cell you've created will listen to what you tell it. So it's, if you it's tell your it, ass. It's what? Your, your ass, ass yeah. It? yeah. It's your ass, <laughs> so you tell, If you start thinking, I'm really poorly, your whole body will react to that. I'm really poorly. Hold yourself, like, yeah. you know, differently. Shall I give a really uh, boring explanation of what that is? Go on then. It's called your reticular activating system. And what your brain does is it looks for proof based on what you think in your head. So that's how you create your own reality. So yeah. if you think you're poorly, all you will do is look for evidence that you are poorly. Yeah. And that is a self-fulfilling prophecy as yeah. such. And that's what the reticular activating system does. It chooses what you focus on from day to day. Yeah. That's it. There you go. That's Knowledge. <laughs> yeah. Bars. <laughs> yeah. See, this is what happens on this podcast. <laughs> and we we um, teach you. Baby just can't sleep better. as well, so, you know listen, what I mean? Listen, Johnny does it all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Between yeah. the pair of them, they're just, what can I say? Mm. They're the best. They're the best. Um, let's, let's switch it up now and talk mm. about this morning and what we all did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so last night they were like, do you want to do a cold plunge tomorrow morning and I was like yeah 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 and then obviously this morning I was a bit like I don't know you know it's pretty cold up in up in Chorley up, up into Ills up where we are um but we just got after it didn't we talk to me a little bit about that like how did you um you know? so the benefits of cold water dipping are vast like really especially for someone like myself who has no spleen who has to maintain her own wellness because my body can't really fight fight illness like everybody else is mm. if you um cold dip and you get the nape of your neck in and you stimulate the vagus nerve it will ignite your immune system mm. so for me that is particularly important but for everybody especially this time of year is really important um, and also when you get in the cold you notice like all your blood goes to those things that need it so it will surround your organs um, it will surround the areas that uh, ha have tension. So often, if you've got a really knotty neck or shoulders and you get in the cold water, they will really hurt, like really, really hurt to start with because all that blood's going through them. Um, and then all of a sudden it disappears. Um, it's, just, it's just so beneficial. But uh, mind over matter experience because it doesn't feel like it's going to be very nice. <laughs> It's horrendous. I'm not even going to lie to people. I've, I've had a little experience, and, and eventually I will get Josh on the podcast, who's a good friend of ours, who is actually a Wim Hof practitioner. Um, 
I know me and Johnny do the cold showers in like when we have a shower, last kind of 30 seconds we put cold water on. But I think dipping is a totally different thing. Same when I, when I've gone and done it when I'm like try training and going into say a water park, which is absolutely Moscow doing that. Mm-hmm. But I think like you say, actually the cold dipping every morning, or if you can't do it every morning, you know, doing it a couple of times a week. The benefits, like, straight away, because as soon as you get out after a couple of minutes, again, it's like we're talking about how the, the body reacts and adapts. You can feel yourself, like, your body temperature. Yeah. Um, I highly recommend... Can you just talk to us a little about what you made us as well? Because that drink oh, was just... I, so oh. I do it on the retreat. So when we've... So on, our, on mine and Leanne's retreats, we take them to Ingleton Falls and we get in at, at the, the big waterfall. The waterfall, yeah. Isn't it? We need to um, do that, bro. Yeah. We need to do that. It's so good. We're going to do it, and Johnny's going to take his drone. Yeah. <laughs> Am I? Yes. Yeah, we're filming it. We're going we underwater, we're everything. Thing. Scuba diving, yeah. scuba steves. Oh, yeah, you, I don't know if you'll be able to see. It's quite dark. Um, but uh, when we come out, because you... I mean, when we go in at the waterfall, you're literally in... You can be in there for, like, ten minutes because yeah. you're chanting and you're, like, yeah. in it together and it's like a sisterhood. It's different the open water, isn't yeah. it? It's like, it's a different, yeah. like... It's uh, moving it's, as well. It's yeah, so around. it almost feels colder because it's moving because mm. it whizzes past you. <laughs> but um, when they get out, we um, we give them cacao, warm cacao, and that is heart-opening, heart-warming uh, drink. And the one that I did today... Um, was cacao and collagen, and um, I put an eight mushroom blend in as well to awaken our minds. It was it was absolutely gorgeous, and I think it's specifically after you've just done something like that. And again, it's this thing of, you know, it was really su- obviously warm, sweet, oh, yeah, all the good stuff I like that cacao taste. Yeah but really beneficial for you yeah, and really good for you yeah. and straight away afterwards it's like and I, and again it's I know we're a big thing about it, specifically myself with, with like my own morning routine like I, I get up I do I, I do yoga I do a little workout and then I have my breakfast I, I stayed here to, uh, this last night so I didn't do that this morning so to do something like that that's out of my routine yeah. and comfort zone, I'm not going to say comfort zone, but it is getting into a cold war. Is yeah. you know, it's not it's no ideal comfort for everyone. Zone. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like unless you're an absolute lunatic. But yeah. again, I can see why people do it, and I can see why, like now, I'm going to do that and make that a part of my routine, yeah. especially going into the end of this year, but definitely next year. Yeah. How important is it, do you think, to to start your day off like that, specifically if it's like cacao or? those little habits in the morning to um, set the tone for the day or the week really yeah i think like you say having a structure of your morning helps whatever it is doesn't it mm. it doesn't as that discipline yeah. um it's been difficult for us to like you were really disciplined with your habits and stuff weren't you and then aria came along <laughs> and mm. our sort of routine is based around her now she, she, runs um, the show, she, she definitely yeah. runs the show. So yeah. if we've not had a great night, the mm. morning doesn't go. Up. I mean, the morning becomes the afternoon, yeah. <laughs> basically. Yeah. I think. Um, I think on on the same breath as that as well. It, it's always very when you're in a routine and doing something and you're making good progress. Like I always feel like you know life happens to everyone, and I feel like going back to sort of like you know the the good and bad and foods and what you should or shouldn't be doing um i always think like it, it's habits isn't it you know if you if you kind of have those healthy things in place for you to access when you need them but you know somebody who jumps in cold water every day does that mean they're going to live longer than somebody doesn't if somebody eats salad every day or do you know what i mean it's completely vegan it does it, it i feel like it's more along the lines of you know, the majority of the time do you look after your health Mm. because one hamburger is not going to make you fat just as one training session won't make you an Olympic athlete. It's it's what you do over a period of time. And I feel like, you know, for us as well, especially, you know, our our habits and routines have been changed by her. But I feel like we've still kept those healthy things in there, but they're mm. just they're just muddled around. So maybe the the kind of put in when when we can. We have the garage. We can you know train in there. We can go for walks. Luckily around here, it's really nice. So I feel like the the healthy habits are still there, but they've just changed slightly because yeah. we've changed. Yeah. Mm. So um, that morning drink is mm. because I can't drink caffeine. 
mm. because of um, breastfeeding. Well, I could drink it, but I do not need any more excuses for her to be awake at night. <laughs> um, and um, the cacao stimulates you, um, especially with the when we put the mushroom in it as well, mm. which these are things that are um, advised on the packet to not have whilst breastfeeding. Mm. But I am that mum that knows that they could only give my baby goodness. Mm. And she's so cognitively developed mm. from being really young. And I'm sure it's because of all of the, the things that I've like put in place whilst I've been feeding her or whilst being pregnant, mm. like CMOS, so important. Mm. Um, and the, like I said, the mushrooms and, and that cacao drink in the morning instead of me just reaching for a coffee because I've had a shit night with her. Mm. Um, it needed to be something that was healthy. And this particular one that I've got, it's got collagen in it, which is something I never really thought that I would need, being a little bit baby-faced. Um, but I can tell that I am getting on a little bit and wanted a bit of a boost. And also, being pregnant with her, my hair went really bad. Whereas sometimes when you're pregnant, your hair grows beautifully because of all the growth hormones. Mine, for some reason, went the opposite this time. And I've noticed adding that in has really helped. So if it's helping your hair grow, it's helping all those cells be better yeah. and, and, and grow better. But there's other things that you can do, especially women, um, when our collagen production deteriorates, like having honeydew melon as a juice, mm. that stimulates your collagen production naturally. Mm. There's all sorts of like different things you can do. That's really nice in the morning as well. Let me tell you something, Jack. She's a fountain of knowledge. Fountain of knowledge, bro. <laughs> it's, I think this is it, though, again, and it's, it's, um, it's really interesting as well, even, and this is why it's great to do the podcast with you, because obviously I've known you for a little while now, and I know you're super talented, but actually listening to you, and again, it's coming from a place of love, and it's understanding, because you've put the work in. It's, it's so nice to hear you say it, and hopefully, and I'm sure a lot of people will learn, because I'm learning as we do, and this, this is what it's about. It's, a, it's not... I think so many people sometimes are like, especially when they come across and it's like, you've got to do this and you've got to do that. Like All these are just examples of what can help benefit you. But I feel like all of us are coming from a place of like self-discovery. We're trying to, Im yeah. you know, we're trying to improve, we're trying to evolve. And it's, it's picking up these little, little bits here and there. It's not like, yeah. it's not like you have to become a vegan and... No. You have to do cold like plunges said, every morning. The veganism it's like, is literally because my bowel is exactly, full of scar it's, tissue. It, but it's, it's, it's about adapting and, and listening to yourself of like how far you've come on your journey. And then, like you say, it's, it's passing on knowledge at the end of the day. Yeah. And obviously, especially now with this next generation, yeah. it's so important to to give them this information because we didn't we didn't have it at the end of the day. And it, it's not our parents or our grandparents' fault because yeah, they didn't know. Dad have no idea they just, yeah, it. man, it's, I remember when I came home from. Uh, from uni and I cooked for my mum and dad and I, um, I, like I roasted the veg and then like blanched you know like broccoli because obviously it loses all yeah. this like nutrients mm. when you you know if you absolutely boil it like they used to doing it and I remember my mum was just like god that was really nice that and I'm like uh. yeah because of but also like they're setting their ways with like like my dad to this day will put vinegar on every meal really and I'm like You've not even tasted it. Yeah. But he's just in that habit. And also, he's my dad in it. He's like, yeah. I'm like do yeah. this, dad. He's like, no, son. Yeah. I brought you up on this bread, son. This is what it is, like. this is, This is, you know, meat and veg. You know, and, and which I get, do you know what I mean? But I think it's, again, I think listening to 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 yourself and how passionate you are about it. And honestly, trust me, the food's amazing. Like, it, it's that, isn't it? It's trying new things. It's, it's implementing uh, positive change in you, mm -hmm. whether it's your diet, whether it's your you know, your structure or your, your, the way that you, you know, you set out in your life, whether it's your training, all these things, and going back to your point, Johnny, it's that, isn't it? It's about, it's about being consistent and being disciplined with it. And again, life chucks curveballs all the time. And it's how you react to that. And it doesn't, you know, if it means if like you have a cup of coffee or like I say, whatever, don't mean you're a bad person and a piece of chocolate. No. Like I had a latte macchiato and a, bloody what was it after eight before we did this like but I did a cold plunge and had cacao yeah. so I'm balancing it out like, but, it's, <laughs> but it's that for me it is yeah. that you have to you have to enjoy your life but if you if you feel like you want to make changes and you're feeling a little bit sluggish there's ways of doing it and like yeah. listening to this I know hopefully will have a positive effect on people and make mm -hmm. them go 
Yeah. It's not it, it's not really difficult and it doesn't have to be, you know, bad. It can be really good. It's trying yeah. new things, whether just, it's like the aubergine yeah. and the sweet chili, yeah. it's little There's little just things. Simple simple changes. I think so many people live with brain fog, um, migraines, you know, these little things. Mm a quick tweak of a diet mm. that's why I, when clients come to me and I ask for a seven day like be honest with me give yeah, me a yeah. seven day diary it, it's literally just little things that you can pull out mm -hmm. and their whole life could be changed yeah it is it's, it is those little those little changes because again yeah. the little changes end up having big effects yeah. Yeah, down the line effects. whether yeah. it's with your training um, yeah I, don't, I know a big one for us is um it's, it's even potentially like the spiritual side or, or, or kind of like you say, that positive self-talk. Mm. How do you find that? Because obviously you're a, you're a busy lady, you've got three young children. Mm -hmm. How important is it as you as a, as a woman, as a mother, as obviously a partner, mm -hmm. having that in a dialogue with yourself and something that over time that you've, you've developed as well mm. and obviously yeah. passing it on to you? these three little women that you've got yeah, in your life. so yeah. important. It must be hard being so sexy all the time. Oh, stop it! <laughs> <laughs> no, it is so important, and I think that's what got me through being in hospital for nine weeks. I, I, I was so ill, I got segregated into my own, own room, so no one else would see how poorly I was. Mm. And I couldn't watch them eating, because I couldn't eat for nine weeks. So, mm. um, so remaining positive through that, was my biggest challenge in life, like massive, to not go down that slippery slope of, oh my God, I'm dying. Mm. Um, I never accept that that was what was gonna happen. It's not gonna happen to me. And I think the main thing that got, got me through it and gets me through when I don't feel well now, because there are days I don't feel good. I mean, not sleeping well. And um, I have more of a challenge to be well than everybody else in the room, do you know? Um, but it's my children, and being a mother, that's what gets me through, which sounds really like, Ugh. but oh, it, it literally is. I it, I am, like, doing the cold plunge and Sophia coming home from school the other day and wanting to do it as well because Mummy had done it, and Olivia did it with us the first time. Mm -hmm. I know that I am their biggest influence, mm -hmm. and we haven't had the best journey, the my older girls, this is, aside from having Aria, um, you know, my marriage broke down. They saw things that they shouldn't see as young children. Their mummy was whisked away and poorly and they never got to come and see her in hospital. Um, there's all sorts of stuff that they've had to get through. And I know it's me that they look to, to, to how to survive that. Mm. So I have to be, it's not just for me, it's for them. Mm. Um, and now I know uh, so many skills and different things with meeting people along the way, like Jessica, like Liam, Amy doing the sound bath, um, you know, all these different tools that I know now that is going to have a massive impact on our baby and our lives going forward. It's not just that self-talk, it's that whole toolbox mm. that mm. people are not aware of. Can I add to that? You can. All right, lovely. I think I think what it is as well, it's a matter of resilience and like you were saying about discipline and you know, it's very easy to think positive when you're doing well. And it's very easy to think negatively yeah. when things are not going well. So but the, the the there's always a point of, of you know, there's always a what's it called? Like a a lever or something like that. <laughs> but the, there is something that when you are placed in those positions, it does come down to your, your resilience and discipline. And, and I think that's what, you know, I look for, for inspiration. Because Sophie's like most resilient person I've ever met. Mm. And that's why I made her my girl. Mm. Um, so <laughs> that, that's what it is, isn't it? Like you, you kind of have to look, um, you know, beyond yourself in a way, because now, mm. you know, children and, and even sort of like knowing that her girls are watching, you know, that, that's a, uh, an inspiration to be more than you are and think about things that are beyond yourself as well. And once you actually, you know, feel into that, the, the decisions to be more disciplined, the decisions to, you know, speak your truth and be who you are become way more important because you know that that influence will, will really affect, you know, what they're going through. Mm. And 
I feel like it's the, it's the only way that you really have a, a true connection, whether it's me and you or me and Sophie. Like once we kind of like speak our truths and be who we are and and sort of like look at that discipline and be and become better people and and obviously being a better person is different to everyone, you know. But being the very best person you can be, you know, and that that's something that we all share and we all grow and learn from and and I feel like that's that's the real that's a special thing with me and Sophie and that's a special thing with our friendship as well and all the friendships I seem to have and and it's not a coincidence Mm -hmm. when you do that work and you Mm -hmm. focus on yourself like people who don't do that they can't be around you you know they they can't you know they'll either end up distancing themselves eventually or hating you Mm -hmm. that's the only way because you 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 really on on a, a different vibe and, you know and you can't you know it's very hard to be around that because it, it does expose you if you're not doing that you know oh massively i think mm. i think the big one that i get from you sophie is, is and it's something that intrigues me and i'm fascinated with it's mental toughness um mm. i think it's very easy to you know to look at you and be like oh she's a stunning bird she's got three gorgeous kids and she's you know she does all that and she's living the dream but you know, we all have our inner battles, don't we? And again, you've had something that I think a lot of, like you said, that those statistics are so scary. But again, it's against all the odds. You had that mental toughness to be like, now nah, I'm fighting this and I'm going to be proactive and do what I think is right for me. And did it straight away. And then I think that's such an important message to, to people. It's, you know, is trust your gut and back yourself and surround yourself with people who are positive and this doesn't mean like you said like you know we all have tough days we all have bad days we all have days where you know you're not mercenary motivated like you say you're tired um again life throws massive curveballs but again i think if you're consistent in who you are and do the inner work like we're talking about goodness prevails and i don't mean that just be in yourself of like because you're a good person it's you want to be a good person and you put you put you work hard on yourself and again it, it's it's like a, a knock on effect to other areas in your life and obviously like you say your girls will see that do you know what i mean yeah. that's why ari is a happy kid she's yeah. a happy child because she's got happy parents and she's got a happy life here with the girls and i know obviously everyone buzzes off her do you know what i mean like yeah. she's just a bundle of joy but that comes from you too do you know what i mean you yeah. set the tone there i know it's very difficult because he's sat with us and he jokes and that but What's it like having Johnny in your life now? <laughs> and not to big I, him up too much, because yeah. he is a superstar <laughs> and we love him. But He's magic. He really is magic. And I think uh, before I met Johnny, I didn't realise um, how important laughter is in your life. Like, I didn't realise that that was a box that I really needed ticking. Mm. Um, and literally, whether it be making a brew or... I don't like anything. It just makes me laugh all the time. <laughs> Look at his face. And it's so important, that inner happiness, that, um, you know, even a, even in a in a tough... Like, my dad's not been very well, and, and he's always there to... I can have a bit of a moment, but then it'll end up that we're laughing or something, you know, like, just brings my spirits right back, right up. There's no wallow in any shit. There's... Mm. Right, we we're always up here, so we're always smiling, and that's how we like we'll get on, and and it's magic. I can't even. That's why this has been such a whirlwind, and here she here she is. It's you know, and for his influence on my girls as well is massive. Like I bully them every day. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but I can see I can see hey, that, and yeah. it's so, and also like I think it's. But from my point of view of Johnny, because obviously it's like, you know, all you want as your friends or, you you know, me and Johnny are, have become really close over the past few years. You just want them to be happy, especially when we get older, like you do, don't you, Johnny? Yeah. We're not little kids anymore. We're all, we're all adults. Um, and I think that's a really good point. You said about the laughter thing. It is that inner child in us of like, yeah. you know, life is hard as and, it is. And letting that inner child uh, yeah, out. Yeah, and, and be able to be have yeah. a laugh and be funny. Because and, yeah. and, life is serious, but... Yeah. Like, I've noticed a huge difference in him. And again, I think when you sit together, and obviously now you've created Aria, it, you, it's the perfect example of, like, 
oh, that's what it is. And that's like a standard for me now, where I'm like, that's why personally I won't settle because it's like, I do believe there's people out there. Yeah. Us. It's just about whether you're in the right place at the right time. And yeah. I think life does do that. But I feel like both of you have, have helped each other in a really positive way. Yeah. And you continue to do that. Yeah. And again, it's through supporting each other because yeah, that's at the end massive. of the day, you both got separate businesses. Yeah. You both help each other. Yeah. You're trying to run a household. You, yeah. you know, yeah. Ari's come relatively quick. But yeah. I will say it's, it's just been seamless with you two and it's so nice to see because it's just like oh yeah it's just yeah. it's like we've known mm. each other for years and we've not known each other that long and yeah. i think that's the be the best yeah way, way of looking at it, it yeah it? definitely mm. that's how i feel like we we definitely have a relationship that doesn't it, it is bigger than it is on paper if mm. you know what i mean like one lady was so mm. Johnny had to come rescue me at the retreat because I got stranded. Superhero. <laughs> so well, you know, this is what he does. He, yeah, he <laughs> came in his pickup with Aria <laughs> and brought the rest of the food, didn't you? Mm. And um, one lady asked me a couple of days after, how long have you been with your partner? And I said, oh, it's not been that long. It's not, it's not even two years yet. She was like, wow, I was watching you through the window and I thought, they've been together for a long time. And that's mm. the kind of like relationship we have with each other. Yeah. But that is because we've both done the work, like you were saying, mm -hmm. and we've come together yeah. um, at the point when that's, that's done. Yeah, and, and obviously I don't want to like, um, sort of like mislead people in the fact that, you know, doing this and being together, it, you know, the, the things that we do on a daily basis, like the girls and Aria and parenting and working, they are things that we have to navigate and communicate with each other about. It's mm -hmm. not kind of like we just have a laugh and, do you know what I mean? Ha, 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 yeah, let's have a baby. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, so we, we have to navigate these things. But I think it's, you know, based on our communication and what, what we kind of like want, to, you know, at the end of the day, we want this to work. And I feel like that's what it's based on. We want this to work. And, you know, I'd do just about anything to make that work. And I feel you feel the same. So as long as we have that in mind, we can just, you know, we can navigate a lot of things. I mean, I do have to tell her off, as I said, but you know, <laughs> mostly she, she's she's very the very best person I've ever been with. And I feel like that that's the, you know, going on from what you said as well. You know, I didn't realise the, the boxes that, you ticked before the, the like the box wasn't even there to be ticked and mm -hmm. I didn't realise but yeah. I suppose like when we look back you know people that have been in our lives before you know when you do the work some of those people at that time you know they, they wouldn't qualify to be in your life anymore mm -hmm. and I think that's really important to, to really realise that you know you know the, the things that we've been through and and you know things that didn't work have led us here and, and that's a great feeling yeah. you know it really is yeah. And she's like, um, there was nothing to say that I could actually have a baby. Because I've only got, I've not got the organs to run a, uh, one human properly. So to then be gifted with her was a massive blessing. Isn't it? On that bombshell. Yeah. <laughs> Baby number two. <laughs> <laughs> surprise, Jonathan. <laughs> I've got a surprise for you. It's, um, no, I think, again, it's something that I genuinely like, admire the pair of you individually, but as a, as a, as a couple. A working couple. And a working couple. Yeah. And, and again, I know you put the work in, and I know it's difficult because also it's not, you don't do normal things in the sense of like a normal nine to five no. or, you know, you, we you, have to navigate. you, you do and, it, and yeah. it's, it's constant, um, yeah. it's constantly adapting to the, to the other person, which I know everyone does in a relationship, but again, I think when you chuck that into you, in, from a business point of view, especially with us, like we can get a call and it's like we need to do a shoot or, yeah. um, or like last night, you know, we, we, Sophie made us a lovely meal, we had a lovely pudding and then obviously it's Ari's bedtime. We, we ended up go, oh, going in there and doing an edit. Then you pop down on the stairs. And yeah. just, just, I think it's that, isn't it? It's that understanding of like, oh, yeah. just the times when, and again, I think that's like you say, when you're having those mm. laughs and having those moments, yeah. you, you truly cherish them because yeah. you both know that you're busy people and you've got lots of stuff going yeah. on. So enjoy those moments. I think that comes moments. actually from being on your own for a bit because mm. you appreciate that time for yourself still, mm. like, and I know Johnny appreciates his time on his own still. 
So if you have that appreciation, you're not so needy and clingy enough to be together all the time. Um, you can I'd like quite happily be like, yeah, go on, go off to the track for the day and then come home and do whatever you need she to do. She tries to get rid of me all the time. <laughs> We're not on top all of each other. So much me like, <laughs> Where is he? <laughs> do that, that mum talk to the teeth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> getting well now. Yeah. No, uh, no it's, it's, we've both been through things that we didn't want to have in our relationship, so they're not going to be present in this one and that's exactly. where we're both at. And I think that's important but another bit in life with things that have happened and it's, you know, negative things do happen and it's how you react to them and it's sometimes you do have to kiss a few frogs, don't you, to get to your Prince yeah. Charming or for yourself, so, Johnny, do you know what I mean? It's not, and again, it's, and also I, I think that's another thing as well where it's, I know in my past it's like, you know, I've had relationships that haven't worked out and it's not they're bad people, no. it's just taking responsibility in yourself yeah. and going that just wasn't the right time but also it's learning from those experiences and going yeah. well I'm not going to tolerate that moving yeah. forward and I'm going to have standards and yeah. hold myself accountable first and then hopefully I have that in a partner who reciprocates it and mm. it's it's really important that isn't it? it's yeah. really important to understand that you know we're not perfect nobody is no. but if you can be with a partner whether it's in a in a loving relationship or business and I know that's helped with with me and Johnny like we're yeah. friends first and foremost yeah similarly but with me we've and got Leanne. we've got standards and morals and values and it's anyone now who I, who I do work with I try and keep that because mm. whether it's a working relationship or a loving relationship it's like like you were saying you have to have that communication you have to have you have to be on the same page don't you I think yeah. and even though things evolve and change it's something that you can constantly go back to and go, well, this is how I am. This is the way I, I think and feel. Yeah. And ultimately, you just want what's best for each other at the end of the day, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, definitely. So it's, um, and knowing that actually, if it, I know that if Johnny is um, happy in, him, in, in himself and, he think, and he's getting what is best for him, mm. then that's best for me and that's mm. best for our relationship. Yeah. And not having that well, I need to do my thing first. Mm. You know, like giving him what he needs to. Mm. Um, but also I think going back to like previous relationships, everyone is sent for a reason. Mm. And I know I wouldn't be here if I'd not been with my... Mm. Mm. They're just not, they're not Jonathan Ferriman, Brev, so they're not Sophie Baines, so if, if there's anything advice I can give, be more like them, and that'll be, no, stop, don't be a, challenge yourself, have cold water dips, eat vegan food, um, no, honestly, thank you so much, I think we'll wrap it there, because I, I know so this is a positive thing, I think we'll, well, hopefully we will do another one as well, because um, there's so, far too much to talk about, um, and also, do you know what, as well, I think this is could be, this could be a really good one, potentially moving forward, where we do this and invite other guests on as well, because I think it's, again, I think this is what, it's the art of conversation and having these conversations. You learn so much more about them, and I know, listen back to this, I can't wait to listen back to this and to share it with people, because there's r real nuggets of gold here that, and I, I, most of the time it's not me talking, I can just listen, and, I've, and it's been great today just to listen and learn. Um, and I think that's a real key thing in this. Like there is absolute gold in this. So please listen to what to what the boys and girls have been saying in this because it's it's really difficult at the moment to to know who's you know speaking truth. There's that many people. There's that many voice boxes. There's that many podcasts. And it's why I've stopped doing mine to be perfectly honest because you're so busy doing other projects, and I'm dead excited what what I'm doing at the moment is I'm, I'm working so hard at the moment I'm so happy but I'm so glad you said to do this and capture this moment because it's really important to document these moments because it's where we are in our life like we're very fortunate we're all healthy and happy and I know that's come through working on ourselves but also it's like we've we've all had tough times in our lives like we know everyone has but there is a light at the end of the tunnel you constantly have to keep working but it's it helps when you surround yourself 
take responsibility, you know, write stuff down and atta attack and, and live life because life's really short and if you want to do something, do it because I know in the past I've not done it and it took me ages to get to this point and now I'm thinking, God, I wish I would have done that younger but you can't think like that. It's it, Everything happens for a reason. It's our time when our time is. Um, but if there is something that you want to do, like go for it because once you start doing it and you find your purpose and your why, it's funny how life starts turning really quickly and you're like, oh, I've done that. And there's a reason for that and it's taken responsibility as well of being like, oh, I'm really, I did it the other day. Some, I, I, got, I got something happen with a film. I managed to box something off for a film. And I was just like, I'm sick, me. And everyone was like, yeah, you are. And I was just like, I, I hate that. So, oh, but it's, it is, it's, it's having that ability to, a couple of years ago, I wouldn't have done that. Because one, I wouldn't have got that DOP involved, but also I wouldn't have took responsibility and gone, I deserve praise or that. Like I say, we were talking about like self praise. That doesn't mean you go around and look in the mirror every two minutes and just think you're the best thing sliced bread. I don't. I don't think that's good advice either. But I think it's that, like we were saying that positive self talk, being kind and nice to yourself, and that starts by doing simple things, whether it's exercise, eating healthy, drinking water, cutting down on negative things whether it's like alcohol whether it's drugs whether it's like chocolate whatever it is make those simple steps and you'll realize you'll live a healthier happier life and a, and a lot more fulfilled as well um can i add to that a little yeah, bit definitely. as well like you know i think we always talk about self-worth and we talk about um you knowing your worth and and all that stuff but i often feel like it's not about going out there and demanding other people treat you how you want to be treated. I feel like it's more understanding where your value is mm. and being of service to others. And I feel yeah. like that is how you, you learn your worth. Mm. And I feel like it, it does come from the out the inside out. But once you start, you know, putting that out there, then it really is more about how valuable you are to other people and how you, you help them. And I feel like for you as well, like boxing stuff off, I feel like that's you learning that you're, you, you're very valuable and people respect what you do and you're of service to others. So people actually turning around and helping you, they feel compelled to, and it's the same with you and it's the same with myself. When you're valuable to someone and you help them, you know, you, you become valuable and I feel like once you realise that and you sort of like think to myself, well, look, I am valuable, mm. you know, I am worth it because I create value in other people's lives and help them, you know, and that's where I feel like is the lost conversation, you know, mm. with self-worth because, you know, it, it is that situation. It's not from the vanity in terms of thinking I'm better than other people. Yeah, it's not ego, is it? No, it's, it's, it's more about you know having value and you know and value could be just checking up on someone mm. it could be just seeing how someone is you know what i mean it's not this i need to go to their house and wash their feet every day and shit like mm. that's, not, that's not it but i mean it, it's like really thinking about you know how how do i help people and and luckily for me and for you i can use my business to be able to do that and sophie can use her business to be able to create that value and and you do get a lot of self-worth from it and i'm not saying it's not hard or whatever and you know being of service to people is not always easy no. um and even being you know like that to yourself it, it is difficult mm -hmm. but i feel like that's where you kind of have that self-talk and that and that kind of pick me up to be able to not only lift yourself but you know by you lifting yourself it automatically lifts the people around you as well i think that's just tremendously important 100 mm percent -hmm. mm -hmm. i couldn't have said it better myself so for how can people get hold of you, whether it's Instagram or like hopefully they'll hire you so you can cook a load of food for them because it's epic. Through Instagram really, um, yeah, or email link. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. I'll, I'll make sure I'll put like a little tag in the, um, in the post and stuff as well. And obviously like the retreats next year, you've got loads of plans. Loads. And it's, it's mixed as well, isn't it? You do women, men. Yeah mixed yep. men and women yep. um they're all on the website yeah we're doing a medicine one as well this time exciting sure. and hopefully at some point we're gonna have um your cookbook yeah. at some point That's we, the we are we've, yeah 
There's mm. plans. There's there? plans in the future. Yeah. I'm looking at Johnny like, yeah. you can help me, aren't you, yeah. babe? <laughs> we will. Yeah. Um, no, but again, I think that's, this is what's good and it, this is what, what's really good about this. I know I've done it in the past with, with my own stuff, whether it's films and stuff like that, and I've said it on the podcast, and I'm actually doing it now, and it, it holds you accountable, but also yeah. it's, it's nice to hear what you were thinking at that time, and then, like I say, what, what's going to come of it, because I think there's... I see big, big things for you, so because I think you honestly, genuinely one of the nicest people I've, I've ever met, oh. and you're actually, like, you're beautiful on the outside, and that's clear to see, but you, the, if anything, you, you're beautiful on the inside more. Oh, and thanks. it's so nice that one of my best mates is with you, and I get to see like, how happy you make him. But also, you make me happy because he's happy. And also, you make me happy because you make like the best food. <laughs> and obviously, now you've brought Ari into the world, it's like, it's like you've kicked right on. Yeah. I'm not slagging my other mates off, but <laughs> you need to step up here because Sophie's... <laughs> No, but oh. honestly, thank you so much for, for you. sharing your story and being so open and honest. And yeah, I'm, I can't wait to. to Next to year's a big one for us all. Yeah, it is, mate. Yeah, 2024. We're coming yeah. to you. Absolutely. Let's go. All right, love you. Take care. Bye. Bye. <laughs>